over the southern ice shelf, collecting some data. Okay, 150 meters from the surface, and our rate of descent is reasonably comfortable. Oh, I gotta go down. I'm too high. Maybe this thing can fly to the Badlands. I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. Hello, my name is Mike Gabe, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion, or towards the conclusion of my last episode, I ended up leaving Jeb in space, and Jeb still needs to be up there for pretty much about 12 days. So he's here in the Orion 2, and I, uh, this, I had challenges when it came to collecting the goo, and I suspect there were a number of people that were watching me screaming at their screens going right here. There is a transfer data here button. So if I press transfer data here, ah, I th I'm thinking maybe something just happened. I believe so. Capacity. See, here it is. This is where it tells me the capacity here is to hold um, this much kilobytes of data and some mass as well. I think that mass number just went up. So I think, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this goo now is, ah, yeah, it's highlighting the capsule. So the goo has been transferred to the capsule. Now this particular capsule only has one slot available. So even if I had a second goo, I wouldn't be able to do it. But that makes me happy. I now have that, what do we got? 5.4 science in there. Of course, Jebediah still got a ways to go. So, uh, you know, I should put the lights on. I really got to start unlocking some lights at some point too. <laughs> but anyway, we will leave data or er, Jebediah here to continue to collect his crew reports and to meet the requirements of being in space for 12 days. So bye bye Jeb. Now speaking of science actually in, and I didn't show this to you because we had so many things going on last episode, I have now unlocked basic science. So actually what I would like to get into next is into some of these things that are being built. So for instance, um, I have this mite experiment which is going into a polar orbit. Let's edit it and see if we cannot give it some more that it can do. Now, going down here to science, let's see what we have now. We have some new things. I have this experiment storage container. Um, I think this, yeah, it says carried by Kerbals. So this is something a Kerbal has to carry that I'm assuming they can carry, let's get this out of the way, that they can carry, uh, has nine slots of storage capacity. Oh, so like if you're on like the moon and you're going around collecting lots and lots of rocks, well, that's where your rocks go. Awesome, so this is a Kerbal inventory item. So that's one of my new items. That's the goo. I now have the Science Junior Materials Bay, both an inline one and a radial one. Uh, oh, these guys hold four slots. I can do four Materials Bays and hold them in there. So starting to unlock some useful stuff. The press map, oh, that's not new. Geiger counters, no, uh, not as many new things. So the mystery goo and this little storage thing and uh, radar altimeter. Okay, so that is something. Not as much, not much I can do with this. Nope, I don't think so. All right, I thought I'd be a little bit more exciting than that. So we shall uh, cancel our edits. And let's take a quick look at what else we have here. We have an ugly test, that's for, and Munar 2 won't be coming back. It's going to land on the moon. Last episode I called this Octo 6, I think, but then realized I already had a probe going out towards Moon that I call Moon R1, so I'd best stay consistent with that. Call this one Moon R2. Again, Materials Bay doesn't help because it's not coming back, so okay, these are all fine, I suppose, the way they are. So let's do ourselves some time warping, but I do want to keep an eye on Jebediah. It does give me a little yellow warning thing. Um, because he's only down to 12% food, but 12% food is still like 17 and 18 days worth of food, 17 and 14 days worth of food and water. Um, and that's because I took most of it out of the container. So he's okay. He's fine. You can look at these numbers here, what's really important. 
that you want to keep an eye on. So, what's coming up next? An ugly test vehicle. Okay. Again, I don't know. Not too ugly. Let's take a look at our contracts. And as I've been saying, I've been getting in the habit of creating missions here so I don't lose track of what contracts. So what are we doing here? We have to haul a decoupler. Uh, flying Kerbin between this altitude and this velocity, nice velocity range, that shouldn't be too big a deal. And then we have to test the small launch escape system in a flight over Kerbin. So that means we probably have to stage, yep. Get back here, so there's my small launch escape tower at this altitude in this speed. Okay, so we're clearly gonna be getting to this one first. Escape tower first, and then getting up to this altitude and do it again, and then we'll just let everything die. So let's make sure our staging makes sense. We're losing that, then the central booster, some parachutes, then we're on to our upper stage. Yeah, all that will happen at the same time, but that's only going to happen at an altitude of 18 to 19 kilometers. I don't think I'll be into change that order a bit. I don't think I'll be into the upper stage of this by that time. We'll find out. So, throttle up. And let's do this thing. Oh no! I botched that. I should not have. Okay, I have to again. Alright. Oh, shoot. I didn't have... Okay, okay, okay. Alright. That change of staging was a bad idea. Oh my gosh. Come on. Back on here. What did I say that these things would go? Oh, it has lost a significant amount of aerodynamicness. It's just a big chunk of bluntness at the top there. I think I had botched this mission. Staging was fine, just the way it was. Okay. Not going to reach my altitude. I am in the right speed range temporarily, but clearly that was a fail. So, as soon as I did the staging and lost the fairing at the top in the tower, the aerodynamics properties of this thing just failed me. It's going down. I also never did test it, I'm pretty sure, because I was so confident in myself. <laughs> but you know, we got to let some things go wrong, right? Let's build something else. What contracts don't I have anything happening for? Okay, got that happening. Miss V and Kerbal, I'd love to do that one I have happening. That one. Ooh, an altimetry scan of Kerbin. Ooh, 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 ooh. Definitely a mundo. Yes. Let's take a look at this. Let's build ourselves a mapping satellite. So this will be new. Okay, so we have to build a vessel. Apparently here we need to call it the Maxwell 1, so why don't we do that? Not 100% sure that's what we got to call it, but I'm not going to mess about. It's got to get into an orbit, it's got to have the radar altimeter on it, and we have to do a scan of Kerbin, at least 50% of the planet. We'll clearly go for all of it. We have to achieve a certain orbit here. Orbit has to be between 493, well pretty much 493 and a bit. Oh, up to here, okay, so somewhere in this range. 495, okay. Low eccentricity, but... Oh, the inclination has to be between 83.1 and 83.6 degrees. So, pretty specific in inclination. So, by my calculations, I need to have a probe with 480, let's call that 500 meters per second at delta V to get from low orbit up to this altitude. And a launch vehicle, pretty much 300... 3,800 meters per second at Delta V to get to this inclination, so let's do it. And here she is, and you'll be seeing this fly next episode, but right now, why don't we watch Jebediah serenely orbit Kerbin while we wait for the Octo-5 Mite experiment to complete its rolling out to the launch pad. 
All right, so here we go. The Mighty Might Experiment, otherwise known as the Octo-5. Heading off into a polar orbit. So it is pitching over towards the south, more or less. Again, a little bit west of south, to be quite fair. No experiment, or no contracts associated with this. Simply going into a polar orbit. Now, if I have this right, this is biome specific in the lower atmosphere, or in the low space, but not biome specific in high space. So we're going to actually put our apoapsis into high space. So we'll end up going into a bit of an eccentric orbit, and then uh, once it is finished with the high space science. Yeah, I really like the look of this rocket right now, when it's just got that hammer on the bottom of it pumping away. It's such a simple rocket, but oh my gosh, it's doing a job. This, this uh, hammer with the uh, two radio boosters is becoming a workhorse for me. We're going to keep burning until our apoapsis is up to actually around 250. So we'll, we'll, don't want things to get carried away here. Actually, I, I, yeah, no, I don't. Keep going. Stop because my apoapsis is getting away from me, but of course it is. So, two hundred and be a little more than that that feels good okay so let's orient this to catch some sun rays has not started collecting data yet but it is ready to go let's let's actually one thing that the previous probe could not get to or at least not very well the is because uh, is getting over the ice caps so I definitely should be starting to get stuff over the ice caps here once we're over if not something is wrong there it goes so over the southern ice shelf collecting some data this will do a good job collecting all that and then we're getting some high science. Oh, it's low. It's might slow over the water. I'm kind of surprised. Why wasn't it getting over the water before? Very, very weird. But we also oh, just transmitted it all away. I should watch my electricity. Be careful. No, electricity is fine. Okay. Should also be getting some high might experiments. Are we not in high space by now? There it goes. So 250 is high space. I thought it was 240 for some reason. Okay, 250 is high space. And so now it's collecting high space data. There is... How much high space data for this thing to collect up here? It's got to spend 12 minutes in high space to collect the 2.4 units of data that's here. It might take a few passes for it to do that, but we'll keep an eye on it. Once it's done collecting the high space, which is not biome specific, we're gonna bring it down so it's nothing but in low space. But for now, we can leave this alone, get back to the space center. 48 science, does that get me another no? Now, this one is 45. Docking ports, better radial decouplers, KOS container, KIS containers bigger fuel tanks oh for goodness sakes I know exactly what I wanted to take a look at that I've completely forgotten about some more engines including a separatron which I've already cheated my way to getting not cheated but spent a little catch this is what I need reliance and swivel engines and the thumper SRB and the Kodiak that will really help with boosters boost our bigger boosters that's 90 away. Also down here, I have for 45, this is the two crude pod. 
So I can send up multiple Kerbals. Actually, this would be a good thing as well to be starting to get into tourist contracts. That's only 45. I could do that right now. But can I lift it? You may recall I've been trying to build some heavier boosters. Something that can lift at least two tons or else it's not really worth my time building. And I've been pretty challenged by the engines that I have. And I did unlock fuel lines using the marketplace uh, contracts, the same place I got the Separatrons a little bit ahead of time. And uh, I'm not going to show it to you, but I did try and build myself a better booster and really didn't run into too much success. You know what would really help? Struts would help. Where are struts hiding? There they are. And that's got the tricoupler and docking ports. Oh, and then for five more, tiny fuel tanks. I think I'm going to go here. I think I am going to go here. Because a two-person pod's not much use if there's if you can't lift it. How long is it going to take for general construction? Just five days. I took the build point that I earned from unlocking that science node, put that to the second bay of the space plane hangar. I got a lot going on in the space plane hangar. The Weasley Mark One, as you can see here, is just about complete, and shortly after that will come the improved seaplane that from a few episodes ago. You last saw that. And also, over the last few episodes, I've been struggling with a vertical takeoff and landing craft, and I decided. I was going to re-explore that. I wanted to lick this particular puppy and build me something that was actually going to be practical for me in-game. But I kind of ran into, well, a different kind of technical snafu. I went through all the bother of building this beautiful little VTOL <laughs> and then suddenly uh, realized that I hadn't pushed the record button. So this is my <laughs> attempt at building a VTOL. This is a rescue VTOL, as you can see from the title, because it is got a couple of seats for picking up rescued Kerbals. Um, I had just run a first simulation and realized that my hover script isn't working because of the orientation of the cockpit, which is our control point. So what I need to do is hide a probe body in here. Now the smallest of probe bodies will do. All right, I wanna hide that. Of course, it's probably not even gonna let me put a nose cone on the front of this, is it? Oh, ha! All right, I'm happy with that. So, I need to find that little QB. Oh, maybe I can make this into an action group and control from here. There we go, that's what I need, okay. SAS on, engines engaged. I also, as you can see, added some parachutes. I couldn't do that before because before I was building this thing under contract and the contract specifically said not to have parachutes on it, but now I'm building something so that if everything's going badly, I should be able to just hit the space bar and hopefully everything will be okay. <laughs> That's the idea. Okay, hover, run, hover, AG. There we go. Okay, now if I hit uh, nine, the engines are throttling up. Hoorah! And give it a little bit of, little bit of upness. It takes a while for these to spool up, so we'll wait for them to spool up. Oh, this does look cool as it's pushing all the dust away. I like that. Okay, we should be... There we go, we're going up. Okay, let's try and keep it exactly on the upness there. Five. Okay. Okay, now let's turn around. Rotate, 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 rotate. Uh, pull, pull, pull back. I want to head towards the mountains. It's really... I know, whoa, well, I'm going to the north. No, 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 no. I rotated too far. I rotated too far. Oh, this thing's fun. <laughs> I gotta be careful not to tilt it too much. Let's give us a six. A couple of ups. Because 
although the program will adjust the throttle to now I'm generally going the way I want to go will adjust the throttle to uh, just want to get this thing pointing right there we go going towards the mountains there we are excellent will adjust the throttles what I'm trying to say to compensate for tilting it over to try and keep you going okay this is really hard just to there. Okay, I want to uh, go back to hover. Oh my gosh, there we go. That's what I want. Back on, back on. Oh my god, it just doesn't, the SAS just doesn't want to hold the roll command there. There we go. No, I've said there we go too many times. Back on top. There we go. Okay, just forget the roll. Just go in the direction you want. I think adjusting roll is a bad idea. You should spin this around in the VAB. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I, getting to the mountains I don't think should be a problem. I'm going to try and see if we can touch down right about here. So... What I need to do is also put an engineer chip and then I can really look at my horizontal... Oh, here we go. Okay, we're a kilometer, over a kilometer and a half. Let's bring that retrograde up to the top of the nav ball. Still descending. So if I just keep playing around with this, we are not descending very quickly, so let's... <laughs> if I keep just watching the nav ball and keep chasing that retrograde vector back, just watching my altitude at the same time, I should be able to do this alright. Sorry, this thing kind of looks... I like it. It's kind of cool. With all the smoke coming off of it. Okay, 150 meters from the surface and our rate of descent is reasonably comfortable. Okay. Just about there. Ready to kill the engines, and cut! Aha! Uh -huh. Now, I'm sorry. I'm uber pleased with that. <laughs> that was awesome! I am so excited that everything is working the way that it should. And I know I'm spending a lot on simulation, but it is worth showing you the couple of things in here that has been... Le oh, let's uh, end the program. One. One when I'm not. There we go. And uh, let's just edit it. I just want to show you. And then we'll recover. I am very pleased with how that turned out. It's amazing when you're not trying to hit a specific target like the helipad, how much better this is. Um. So what did I do? What did I, oh, first of all, I can put this weight back. This is back when I thought there was something wrong. That was the weight for available thrust to be zero, so that should work fine. But um, one was this idiocy you saw last episode with the um, plus altitude being in the wrong place after the squaring. So this is now working right. But also notice that there is no more fudge factor. I used to have a fudge factor for those people watching my Sandbox Saturdays. Uh, I had to put in an inexplicable fudge factor in there to get it to correct the, calculate the correct force of gravity and it was a friend one of my patreons that was sitting there looking at this saying you know you're you're you were calculating the thrust setting um in two different places one was up here where you were locking at the throttle and then one was again down here when you were doing this whole you know with the angles and stuff 
and he was concerned it was actually a little bit of a lag and so it might have been just using the wrong thrust setting and the amount of time it was setting the throttle that thrust setting could have changed but it wasn't being reflected up there and that's what nailed it that's why and as soon as I fixed that and had thrust setting only be calculating in one place and then having the throttle just locked to that that fixed the need for the fudge factor so the fudge factor had to do with a lag because I was calculating the thrust in more than one place anyway I am uberly duberly pleased with this so much so that I believe I'm going to push this into the assembly bay now another thing that happened while I was not recording is the uh, Weasley was was finished being built this is a super, a supersonic jet and it's ready to launch the unfortunate thing is though that um, I do have a contract floating around to break the sound barrier um, that I want to pick up first uh, but I have seven contracts so I have to finish off one of these before we can uh, do that so this is the same mission you saw earlier to do these two contracts to test the decoupler at this altitude and this velocity range and to test the small escape system through staging uh, between 18 and 19 kilometers and in this very tight velocity range and that's the tricky part with this one uh, I kinda botched it <laughs> because I wasn't really paying attention this time the staging is on the top I hope that's okay so this is the torch uh, I didn't did I, I I don't know if I can't remember I don't think I test I don't know I don't know what I'm doing anymore <laughs> let's just go so there throttle up and let's launch so I, I put it on an inferior booster as you can see it is on the now be hopefully getting very familiar hammer booster in the R2 configuration this is becoming a real workhorse for me so again what I need to do is when I get in around 18 kilometers I need to be pretty darn close to horizontal I'm hoping this booster will be dry. Oh, I still got a lot of speed to get up to. Get over. Come on. This has more attitude control than before. I'm in the right. Oh, I got to go down. I'm too high. Down, 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 down. I'm too high now. Got to start going downwards. Oh my gosh, this contract. If I just get the one, I'll be happy. There's a lot of thrust in here. Okay, we are going down. But we need to pick up speed as well. Not too much speed, though. Let's throttle down. It's unlikely I'll be able to get this back up to 55 kilometers, but to be honest, that's fine. Throttle down. Throttle up. Throttle up. Ah, now I'm too low. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to get this up to 55 kilometers. I was watching too many things. Okay, come on. I'm just under the necessary speed. Okay, we're now climbing again. Okay, we're in the speed zone, throttle down. Go throttle up. There we go. Just waiting for the right. Oh, we need more speed. Throttle down. Okay. Almost at the necessary altitude. There we go. Got a nice steady speed going stage. That's got it. Uh, clearly this thing's cooked. <laughs> That's one of three. <laughs> so we'll let this thing just die. But okay, that one got done, so that's okay. That frees up a contract. I can do the 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 uh, Weasley supersonic one now. So the contract is to get between oh between I thought this was a narrow thing, but above 2,500 meters, but below 20,000 meters, get faster than 343 meters per second. Uh, with less than 10 meters per second of vertical speed 
hold that for five seconds and then land back on the runway and stop and do it safely without destroying your craft or killing anybody. It's always nice to have that. Let's put that on chase. So we're going to do this. We're also going to see because there's another contract floating about um, for breaking 20,000 kilometer altitude. I suspect this can't do it without any rocket engines, obviously, but one never knows. So brakes off, throttle up. But this should easily be able to top the sound barrier. Here we go. The other thing I want to accomplish too is I would like to know what kind of range this has. So I'm also going to fly. In fact, what I'm going to do is set the KSC as a waypoint using the waypoint manager. And now this is telling me how far I am from the KSC. And uh, okay, I just got to whoa. Okay, I just got to bring down, throttle down. We're going pretty darn. Oh no, we're not going fast enough. We got to keep that vertical speed below. 10 meters per second. Oh, I think we accomplished that. All we got to do is land. So let's get some more. I want to see. Keep throttling up there, Valentina. I want to see if we can perhaps crack a 20 kilometer altitude. My own personal belief is that it can't. I don't think that's a possibility. Nope, give her up. Okay, so we're going to come back down. Let's get an idea of range. Maybe this thing can perform rescues. Maybe this thing can fly to the Badlands, you know, and uh, collect some science. Maybe it can go to the tundra. I don't know, but there's only one way to find out. Now, Kerbin has a radius of 600 kilometers. Two pi r will get you. Uh, the circumference, the distance around Kerbin. So two pi, if we call pi, if we call pi three, <laughs> and two pi would then be six, and six times six hundred would be thirty-six hundred. So about thirty-six hundred kilometers, maybe go up a little bit. Let's call it four thousand kilometers. In fact, that sounds really just about right, given that the Earth's circumference is very close to 40,000 meters or 40,000 kilometers. Wait a minute. Can we get that? Yeah, 40,000 kilometers. Not 40,000 meters. So 4,000 kilometers is the circumference. So that means a range. If you can fly 4,000 kilometers, you can fly it anywhere and fly back. Oh, I should have been kept in track of my fuel numbers or delta V or something. What? What? This will help, won't it? Liquid fuel, of the 400 units of liquid fuel, I am now at almost 350. So 50 would be one eighth of the whole thing. And I'm almost at 300 kilometers, so 8 times 300 is 2,400, 2,500 kilometers. Not quite in the realm of uh, flying around the planet, but a respectable range. We'll let this go a little while longer. You can well imagine why I wouldn't want to do this in simulation mode where every second's costing me money. Of course, a lot of that 50 units of fuel that I used up in here uh, was taken up in some inefficient maneuvers of trying to get up to a highest altitude that I can and, you know, and uh, breaking the sound barrier at a relatively low altitude. So probably the range is longer than I think it is. And as well, as you use up fuel, the 
weight of your plane, of course, is going down, which improves the fuel efficiency. So the fuel efficiency increases as the amount of fuel in the vessel gets less. So 2,500 kilometers for range is probably quite lowballing it. Jeb's got just under four days left of his 12-day journey. I should maybe check give us something to check on here. Let's see, if I turn on this and turn on the Orion, there we go. How's Jebediah doing? Jebediah is still 1% stress and 1% radiation. The rest is all zeros. In other words, Jebediah is hanging in there admirably. You know what? I'm wondering, I'm going to let it climb. We'll let it climb naturally, just on its own. Funny thing as to why, you know, if you leave it like I just have SAS, it should lock itself to a particular attitude, and then, uh, you know, stay at that attitude. But of course, Kerbin being curved, <laughs> keeping you locked in the same attitude relative to the universe in the game, as you go around Kerbin, you're slowly pitching up. And KS and Kerbin being a tenth of the size of the Earth, of course, that change is pretty dramatic. It is entertaining to watch the flat earthers wrap their head around why attitude indicators in planes really don't work that way in real life. They're not just locked on to some artificial gamer coordinate system. Uh, they probably should look up how they really work. All right, we're almost at 320. Let's just that again. That'll be at when this goes to 320 units of fuel. That's one fifth of my fuel used up. Ah, see here we're reaching our maximum altitude. You can see how this is dropping now. And I think a big problem is we're losing lift on the wings. Anyway, I lost track. I'm at 320. One fifth. So that is, oh, call it 900 just to be a number. So 900 times 5 is 4,500. So I think, I think I'm in the range of being able to go anywhere in Kerbin and come back. I think I'm going to call this. I think this has a range to go wherever it wants. So Val's turning around. And turning around the Kerbinot way. With a supersonic. There we go. I actually had a f interesting conversation on the weekend when around a campfire. I actually ran into, I'm not quite going to call him a flat earther. He is definitely a ardent moon hoaxer, but did express doubt on the shape of the planet, but clear, but his convictions were not quite as, as, as strong as they were the fact that the moon landing was faked. And I'll tell you, I had a great conversation with the guy. I don't think either of us budged an inch <laughs> from where we were. But he was rather shocked to run into somebody that knew enough physics and knew enough uh, how how space travel works to uh, to throw to, to 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 throw away some of the sillier things that he was trying to say, and it was fun. It's fun getting into these conversations with people that ardently disagree with you, as long as you don't make them personal. And just have a conversation and, and and agree to disagree and don't go into it with the expectation regardless of where your stand is of expecting the other person to change their mind no matter how convinced you are that they're wrong and trust me I'm plenty convinced that this guy was wrong just just throw little bits out there little bits of doubt people don't change their minds overnight it never ever 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 happens but if you can put in that little tiny seed, if you can move him from his one spot that is 
10,000 miles out from where reality lives and get him maybe to move to 9,999 miles away? You did good. We have a ton of spear here. Just wait, just wait. Let's 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 kill some speed here. We are ridiculous quantities of speed here. We are coming in on our kamikaze approach. Oh my gosh, like crazy kamikaze approach. Come on, slow down. Reverse thrust is toggled on. So, God, I'm almost at full thrust, but that's full thrust in the other direction, so this is slowing us down. Oh my god, thank god, and there's very reverse thrust. This is berserk. Oh wait, I'm losing... The reverse thrust was messing up the lift there. Just flare a bit. There we go. Alright, we're good. We got this now. <laughs> the reverse thrust was really kind of... I don't know. It was, it was starting to dive. We got this. And brakes on. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Okay, contract complete. Awesome. We can actually also uh, delete this mission. Excellent. All right, uh, let's recover into the active vehicle into the space plane hangar oh should I I think I should start the upgrading process I think so I have 40 grand to spend yeah we're doing it there we go we're beginning the upgrading process on the tracking station that's very exciting because that's going to allow me to use maneuver nodes finally and as you see me hunting for another contract to replace the one that I just fulfilled, I think this brings us to a good place at which to end this episode. We got a lot queued up for next episode. So in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.